Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you have your way in this service. I thank you, God, for for what you did on yesterday, Lord. I pray that you just have your way in me. Let the words that come out of my mouth be all of you and none of me, Lord, because I don't really got nothing to say myself, but Lord, there's stuff that you want all of us to learn. So Lord, help us to learn from you together. And thank you for even choosing to use my mouth to speak. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Have your will in your way, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Whew, hallelujah. I have to say yesterday, Y'all already taught what I was gonna teach. <laughs> all, all, all the prophets going around here just, just already knew it all <laughs> because God, God said it. I'm telling you, it was beautiful yesterday. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and just teach what or or just share what I feel the Lord had gave me yesterday, and it's just basically gonna line up with what happened yesterday. Amen. Well, the conversation that went forth yesterday. Thank God. All right, so I'm gonna start. Um, what I called it was accountable to God. That was like the title that I kind of gave it. Um, it was called accountable to God. So I'm going to start by reading Ezekiel chapter three, and I'm actually going to read verses one through 22. And it reads, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat thou, I'm sorry, eat that thou findest eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat the roll. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, son of man, go and, and get unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a, of a strange speech and of an hard language but to the house of Israel, not to many, I'm sorry, not to many people of a strange speech and of an hard language whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me for all the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads as an adamant harder than flint. Have I made thy forehead fear them not neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them, thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Then the spirit took me up and I heard behind me a voice of a great rush rushing saying, blessed be the glory of the Lord from this place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them and a noise of a great rushing. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away and I went in bitterness 
in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Tel Abib that dwelt by the river of Chabar. And I sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them seven days. And it came to pass at the end of seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest them not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at thine hand yet if thou warn the wicked and he turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not and he doth not sin he shall surely live because he is warned also thou hast delivered thy soul and the hand of the lord was there upon me and he said unto me arise go forth into the plain and i will there talk with thee that's first part right there now i know that was a whole lot but it say a whole lot so the, the, the verses that, that really jumped out at me from that whole section was actually verses, the first set of verses was verses seven through nine, where, where it says, but the house of Israel will, will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads as in adamant yeah adamant harder than flint have i made thy forehead fear them not neither be dismayed at their looks though they be a rebellious house and so right there he's talking to his prophet about his assignment that he want, wants to give him and he already let him know in advance that he's sending him to impudent and hard-hearted people these people god's already let him know they they not gonna hear you they not gonna listen to you they just they they already got their own agenda they they already know what they gonna do but god still was gonna go ahead and send him so that at least they have opportunity to hear what god say he's still gonna send them and sometimes that's how It'll be for the prophets of God in 2023. Sometimes as a prophet, God will tell you something and God already know who going to hear you and who not going to hear you. They, he, he already know that they're not going to listen. He already know they hard headed. He already know they're going to do what they want to do. He already know that God already know when he sends you, he is not unaware that somebody or, or who is not going to listen to what you got to say. 
but but just know that God will still send you to people that won't that that won't have an ear to hear him or an ear to hear what he got to say through you. God will do that. God will send you. He will send you. He will send you anyway. He will send you. But what I love is it said, he said, I have made your face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. And then in the next word, it says, as an adamant harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. So God is going to strengthen you. Now, of course, we don't like it when God shares something with us and people don't listen because we want them to be OK. We don't want them to suffer whatever he about to do to him before he send us. Especially if we the, the uh, last hope of them listening to him before that he go ahead and get him whatever he going to do to him. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see them, you know, go through or suffer. You know, we don't want that. But again, God already knew when he sent his prophet that they was not going to listen. God already knew he just, but he was still going to send him. And so sometimes we just, again, we just have to understand that sometimes we're going to be sent and sometimes the people that we get sent to not going to listen. They just, they, they ain't going to have nothing. They're not going to feel like they need to change. They're not going to feel like they need to do nothing different. They're going to feel like they're good how they are. And that's just where they're going to be at. But we got to allow God to strengthen us to do his will. We have to allow God to just give us what we need and to strengthen our minds and our hearts. And we have a made up mind. I'm going to do what God say do regardless. These people are not going to make me feel some type of way so that I don't go do what God say do. Because when when I look at the people, then I'm going to mess up. If I look at what the people say, if I'm looking at them and I see that they're not receptive and 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 I stop the work that God gave me, I'm the one who's going to get in trouble. So I got to do all of what God say do, regardless of whether people like what I say or not. I got to do all of what God say do, because I'm accountable to God for myself, for what I do or don't do, according to what he say. And I don't got no time to be getting in trouble with the Lord if I can help it. If I got power, love and a sound mind, that mean I can I can have the mind of Christ and do it and do whatever God tell me to do, because it ain't nothing worth getting in trouble with God. It just ain't worth it. And thank God that the times that we have gotten in trouble, he's been merciful. He's been loving. He done spared our life. He done. And he put us in such a beautiful place in him. Thank God. And he's still with us. and He's pushing us forward in him. But if we can all help it. I know we don't want to get in no trouble with the Lord. Amen. And so and so it's it's just letting us know. Sometime, whatever the assignment might be, every assignment not going to be a bed of roses. Every assignment not going to be to a people that will hear him. He not he not going to just send us just because people are receptive and going to hear him. Sometime he going to send us and it's going to be people that don't that don't give a care. And they got their own ways and they good in their ways and they're going to stay in their ways all the way till he get them. And we just got to do what he say and then get out. Just just go ahead and get out of town. I guess do what we got to do to get out the way and just because, you know, you know, that's it. So. Amen. But again, he will he will strengthen us. He said, behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant, harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be rebellious. I'm sorry, th though they be a rebellious house. So he giving us that reminder. Why? Because we're human beings and we we can look at people and, and feel like we need to do something different because of how they look or how they, you know, we can we can take that personal. God knows we are human beings and we and we got our own perception or or, or feelings of how of people's reactions. So God is, is teaching us right here. He, he, he is showing us, look, don't you pay that no mind. Just your focus is what I say, do just, just do what I say, do. And, and, and you say it and, and be strong in the Lord. So God is our strength. And again, we, we just got to keep that focus. And, you know, one thing I can say, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. I have 
look, I done been under Pastor Parker. And one thing I've seen about her is I, I feel like, like she is like, like she is, uh, uh, how, how, to, how the Bible say it, that she is, that she's like an adamant harder than Flint. And that God has strengthened her, that God's given her a strong forehead against their foreheads. Because one thing I've seen is that she will tell whatever God say, whether we like it, whether we smiling, whether we, look, whether we crying, whether we boohooing it, it don't matter. Whether we angry <laughs> and we want to try to go back and forth. No, regardless of what happened, one thing that 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 Apostle Parker, that I've seen Apostle Parker do is tell the truth, whether it's to me or to anybody else, she will tell the truth. It don't matter. Why? Because, and and so, but we can see why we as prophets need to do that because, because we are held accountable. We are held accountable. And so again, ain't nothing worth getting in trouble with the most high God because who can deliver us if we sit there and make a decision not to do what he say do. Who who can de, who can deliver us if we decide? Oh, I'm not gonna listen to God. I'm not gonna tell these people what He give me to tell them. Who can deliver us from God when we get in trouble with Him? Nobody. So just make good sense not to get in no bad place with Jesus. Amen. All right. So I'm gonna skip down the and the next part of this that really jumped out at me was, uh, let me see here, was the verses 17 through 21. And this is where God says, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. And so he began to break it down that if God gives it to his prophet to speak something to the wicked, if, if you know, someone's wicked and he say, OK, go tell the wicked, you know, this is what they got to do. Or else they're going to be destroyed, whatever the case is, you know. And again, I'm just paraphrasing what that verse said. But if we decide that we're not going to tell them, then, then if then then when they die, their blood is on our hands. That that's going to be on us. So, that's serious. That make us guilty with God. Let me see if I can read it. In verse 18, it says, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. At what? That mean the, the prophet that he said to go say all this stuff to? If the prophet don't say it, that mean that person's blood is on his hand if they die in their sin. He said, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So God given us how he feel about it. God has given us instruction about as as his prophets what his expectation is of his prophets god is showing us right here what he expect when and and even in the in the previous verses he showed us look sometimes he gonna send us the people that just ain't gonna hear us anyway they're not gonna listen they're not gonna listen yes he will he will send us the people that won't listen and he will already know that they won't listen but he'll still send us. And on top of that, when he send us, we still got to say all of what he give us to say to them so that at least they had the opportunity to hear what God wanted them to hear. Whether they agree with it, whether they disagree with it, whether they think it's from God, whether they think it ain't from God, that's not none of, that's not none of our concern. That's not our concern. Our concern is God want me to say this, he want me to go here. He want me to say it. I'm going to go. I'm going to say it. Okay, I'm done. Once God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You done said everything I need you to say. You can go ahead and, and go on to the next, whatever God have you to do. You can, you know, go on. And again, you know, it's up to the people to decide that they want to be obedient. It's up to the people to decide if they want to 
take that warning from God and change. But God said, even if they don't, you at least have delivered yourself. And there go that saying that we kind of been saying, look, if you can't save nobody else, save yourself. I mean, do, again, do we want people to listen to what God has to say? Absolutely. Do we want us to change or people to change? Absolutely. We definitely want that. We don't want anyone to be lost. But at the end of the day, God don't force no one. He gave us all freedom of choice. And so if they choose to use their freedom of choice to not listen to what the Lord is saying through his prophet, then we, you know, then there's nothing that nobody can do. N nothing nobody can do. And he not, you know, and, and when we think of a wicked man, you know, we could even think, you know, what if it's someone I can't stand? What if, what if I have someone that I really, I can't stand them or, or I'll never want to talk to them again. Uh, well, then that's something now, now we got to look at ourselves and say, oh, I got some unforgiveness or I got some anger that I need to deal with. Because if it's anybody that God tell you to speak to and you personally don't want to deal with them or you, or you don't like them personally or whatever the case is, then that means you got to deal in yourself to deal with the whether you have unforgiveness or 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 anger or anything that, that you need God to cleanse you from. Because God not a respecter of person. And God loves everybody. And you never know if God might have you even speak to someone that you can't stand or don't really want to deal with. God might might give you a word for someone that you really don't care for. And you still got to go in, in the right spirit to them. And and you got to go in the love of God and in, in the will of God to them. Hey, I feel, you know, and just whatever the Lord have you to say to them, you still got to do that. It don't matter. Our our personal feelings and emotions don't matter when it comes to obeying God. We we need to obey him because there's so many people that don't know God or don't realize what they're doing. And when God comes through his prophet, then God can use that, that prophet to bring clarity to people. And once God bring that clarity, if they still choose to go against him after he make it clear, then that's on them. But but we're accountable as his people. He called us. We have a purpose in him. And so we have to, you know, do what we have to do, the work that the Lord has called us to do. It's just like if we went to a public job. If we go to a public job and the and the and the job say, okay, you 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 got to ring this cash register, or you got to sweep up the floor, or, or you got to make this coffee, whatever they give you to do. If if the boss come back and he say and and he see that no coffee was made, the floor hasn't been swept, you know, stuff is not in place like it need to be. He, you know, what's gonna happen? A person go, is gonna get in trouble if they don't get fired. They get written up, <laughs> or they might get fired. Why? Because they're not doing the work that they're supposed to do. So, God have His people. Cause, and 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 we have work to do, whatever that work is, whether it be the prophet, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, the apostle, what, whatever the work is. And as we can see, we are accountable to God. So if we don't do the work that we're supposed to do. And then someone dies because we didn't get it together. Then that's on our hands. That's that, that's blood on our hands. So we got to be careful. We got to make sure that we're really you know, doing what the Lord say do. And that we're just being obedient to God, being attentive, hearing him and obeying him. That's very important because we don't want to be found guilty because we didn't do what he said. And then someone else lose their life and we didn't at least warn them. So we just, uh, you know, again, this is just such a, and, and again, what y'all was really saying yesterday, really, I just feel like y'all just all, all already went through this yesterday, but I thank God. But that's just the, the um, spirit of God just being in, in this, just be in agreement with himself. God is in agreement with himself. And as God is in each one of us, then same thing God tell you, God telling us together, collectively, God is deal, dealing with us one, with his one spirit. So that was the first verse that, or the first set of verses. And again, that was, again, if you want to read that later, that was in Ezekiel chapter three, 
verses 1 through 22. So if you want to save that verse and read it later, it's just such a powerful word um, and definitely gives us the understanding that we need to, you know, again, especially as a as a prophet, that when God says, OK, you're my prophet, I'm going to say this. I want you to tell this or I want you to tell that it's very important that you tell it not only not only so that the other people have an opportunity to to get right with God if they choose to hear you, if they do, but also so that you don't get in trouble with God yourself for not doing what God say do or for not saying what he wanted you to say. Um, and again, yes, God will send his prophets to people that will not have an ear to hear. He will still send you. Yes, he will. Okay. So the next verse that I'm going to go through uh, or the next set of verses is um, John chapter 10 verses uh, 7 through 18. And this reads, then said Jesus unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose, whose own the sheep are not seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore, doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. And here we're talking about, again, being accountable, accountable to God. So right here, we can see that there's different kind of shepherds. There's the good shepherd, which is Jesus. And then there's the hireling. The hireling doesn't care about the sheep. The hireling is just there to get his money. But if anything gets too hard, if anything gets too deep, he is gone. He is not going to stay to fight for the sheep. But the good shepherd will give his life for the sheep. Ain't nothing going to happen to them sheep. He will die before he see anything happen to his sheep. And as God begins to raise us up, as God begins to pour into us and to teach us his will and his ways, we're, we're learning so much you know, under this ministry, we are learning so much. We're learning that we can't have unforgiveness. We're learning that we can't have hatred. We're learning that we need to love everybody, that love is a requirement of, of God. 
um, you know, that forgiveness is a requirement of God. That if we don't forgive, that means we're not forgiven. You know, we can't be liars. We can't lie. That totally separates us from God. When, you know, so many different things that we need to watch ourselves for that we're learning. And so we're learning these things because God is raising us up to be leaders. And we're going to have to also begin to teach others as as the Lord puts us in position and 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 we have people under us one day. We're going to have to teach people all this st stuff that we're learning, all the stuff that we had to get delivered from. Other people are not delivered from it yet. There's still people in the world that hate people. There's still people in the world that, that, that are holding grudges. There's still people in the world that 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 feel like it's OK to go and murder somebody. There's still people in the world that got all this stuff in them. That got depression, that got all the stuff that we that we ourselves had to fight and get delivered from. There's people in the world that got pain from 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 the past, whether they was molested or whether they was, you know, raped or whatever. People have so many different things that they're still dealing with and they have not been delivered from it. And God wants them to be free. So he's so he's teaching us. He's showing us how we can be free. And then we're able to help. You know, once we get in, in the position he wants us to be in and we grow up and we mature and and God feel he can trust us, then he can put us in a position to help other people. And so but this is but this part is showing us what kind of heart we need to have as a leader. Amen. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And that's that was deep. Who are we willing to give our life for? Whew. Mm. I'd look at me and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. So this is, you know, or is it just a hireling? You know, do we have a, a, a um, hireling man mentality? No, I wouldn't do nothing for that one. Look, uh-uh, I ain't doing it. Shoot, there ain't, there ain't no one out there I'll do that for. What kind of heart do we have for God's people? What kind of heart do we have? You know, and that's that was so powerful. Thank God Jesus is what God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. God loved every human being enough that he allowed his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, that we will have the opportunity to restore our relationship with him. Some people accept it and some people don't, but he gave us the opportunity. So when I read that, it makes me ask what what kind of leader would I be if I had people under me? You know, what would I be willing to give my life for people that were under me? You know, how hard would I fight for these people? How hard and, and really, do, how hard do I fight for myself? Because we have to we have to fight for ourselves to be right with God. We have to fight for ourselves to obey him and do what he say do. And then after we fight for ourselves, not only fight for ourselves, but then also adding to fight for other people. But that's what a leader has to do. When God calls us. And he puts people under us. We have to be ready to not only fight for ourselves, but we got to also be ready to fight for them. We got to have a heart for the people. To love them. And God, you know, even in, in the previous verses in Ezekiel, he said, I know they're not going to listen. But I'm going to still sin. To me, that's 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 God's love. That's that's God loving people, even though they don't want to change even though they they have their own ways god did and see what's so good about it god knows that they don't want to change god knows that they don't have any any desire to do anything different but he's still but it is his love that says but i still want to at least give them a chance knowing that they wicked knowing that they don't want nothing to do with with him and and what's right he still his love is so much for us as people that he still want to send his prophet to people that won't listen because he he loved that much. He really don't want to destroy nobody. He really don't want them to have to go through. So who knows? God knows.
Amen. Or are we going to be like a hireling? So we go through this and we learn all this and God is helping us to get delivered and we learn to forgive and we learn to love and we learn in all this. And and then we get out there and we get some people and 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 the people don't listen and they make us mad and they frustrate us. And we say, forget it. I'm not doing it no more. Are are we that hireling that that will run and flee? Are we that hireling that say, I know I'm I'm not going to care about these people. These people get on my nerves. I can't stand it. And I'm gone. Put up the deuces. I can't do this, Lord. What kind of leader are we growing up to be? Amen. Again, being accountable to God. We are accountable to God. We're accountable to God. <clears throat> okay, finally, the last verse that I got um, was in Hebrews chapter 13 verses 15 through 21. And it says, uh, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good, and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. But I beseech you the rather to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Now the God of peace that bought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So again, the key takeaways that I got from this section, again, that was Hebrews 13 verses 15 through 21. The key takeaways I got from this was definitely verse 17, which says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Okay, so we have a leader and our leader is accountable to God for us. Just like in the previous, in that first verse, it talked about the prophet being accountable if he doesn't tell the the, the uh, wicked people or, the, or or even the righteous people. Either way, if if God tell the prophet to say something, he don't say it, he's, then he get in trouble with God or, or she, who, you know, whoever they are. So right here, that's the same thing for leaders. We are accountable to the leader, but then guess what the leader has to do? The leader has to talk to God about us. And the question is, what kind of conversation is our leader having with God about us? Is it a good conversation or is it a bad conversation? Because it says, look, it says, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as as they that must give account. They got to give an account for us. They having a conversation with God and let's say, you know, we sitting there and we cutting up and we doing something wrong. And then God start talking with the leader about it. Why are they doing something wrong? Did, didn't you tell them that they not supposed to do that? And if the leader can say, yeah, I told him. I told him they not supposed to do it. But then 
we still sitting there, act, you know, doing it, and we're not supposed to, then we got some trouble. We in trouble with God. If the leader didn't tell us, then then I'm sure that they're going to get to telling us. If they're having a conversation with God and, and they say, well, you know, and, and they feel like maybe we don't know, then, 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 then they sure have an obligation to come tell us. Why? Why? Because they're accountable to God. The leader is accountable to God for us, for what we know and we don't know. And 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 they have to make sure that we know what God wants us to know. So that they don't get in trouble. Because, again, nobody wants to get no one wants to go through some unnecessarily. We don't want to go through nothing unnecessarily, not with God. We don't want to go through that. We want to do what he say do so that, you know, life can be as good as it can be. And again, not to say that just because we always obey God is going to be easy. Because, look, as as we saw earlier, God will send us to people that won't listen. That's not going to feel good. But still got to do it because we want to please God and we want to obey God. And they at least have that opportunity to hear what does say of the Lord, whether it's through my mouth, our mouth, it, whatever mouth God decide to use. They, they are going to get their opportunity to hear him. And what each person does with what God says, that's up to them. But the leader is accountable. And then look, and in the second part, it says, For they watch for your souls as they must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. What kind of conversation is, is God having with your leader about you? Is it a positive conversation? Oh, this this person is obedient, Lord, and they just do what they're supposed to do. And and is God in agreement with that? Oh, yeah, they they sure are obedient. They they doing what they're supposed to do. They walking in love. They not you know tr you know trying to be underhanded and sneaky. They they not trying to do nothing wrong. They just trying to be obedient to me. They're they're good. Is God having a positive conversation about you, or is God having a negative conversation about you? I could raise my hand and say, I'm sure that there's a bunch of conversations God to have with my leader about me when I was cutting up real good, that he probably just wanted to take me on out, out, out the earth. That's, that's what I think. But his mercy, let me stay. Thank God. If we look, even, even looking back and I didn't get the verse, but I remember reading about Moses, even Moses, there was a time where, uh, God wanted to destroy the people of uh, Israel and Moses had to go and kind of intercede for the people to God and say, Hey, uh, I, and, and again, I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing, but I, I believe he told God something like, well, Lord, if you destroy your people, then what will the other nations say that, that, that God just destroys his own people, something like that. And, I, and again, I might, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing that, but basically, God, you know, it was, it was Moses, which at that time was God's chosen leader that had to go intercede for the people because God was ready to get them. He was, he was ready to knock them all off. Like, look, these, these people ain't doing right. Hmm. Man, just, just go ahead and get them. But thank God that for Moses that went and interceded. So God didn't, didn't do all of what he was going to do. And so, so we have to definitely make sure that we're doing what God wants us to do. Not only, you know, because there's other people that need what God has, whether they choose to realize that or not, but God sends us and we got to go and we got to say what he say. And we're accountable to God for what we do and what we don't do. Whether we are the sheep, whether we are the leaders, we all accountable to God. And we got it. And, and, and we want to make sure that when our leader has a conversation with God, that that's a positive conversation because it is unprofitable to us. If our leader is always having a negative conversation with God and we don't ever know what that conversation is. I don't know how the conversations went between my leader and God. I don't know. I wasn't there like. Or I, I I wasn't privy to the to the word by word. I didn't get a play by play. Oh, this is what God said. This, you know, un, unless she told me. Now, if she come and say, well, this is what God say about you, then okay, then I know what their conversation was about. But 
God may not always come and tell you, Ooh, I'm going to go talk to you about this. God just going to talk with them because they did. And then your leader will come and let you know what you need to know. That's why it's very important that we hear our leader. Because when our leader tell us something and we get angry and we get mad and, and we feel like, oh, that's not true. Because, yes, I have. I have felt like there's stuff that she said that was not true or that I got mad about it. I, I, I was in my feelings because I because maybe I wasn't ready to see the truth of myself right then or I had not seen the truth of myself. So I got upset and I would go to God and she's right. I would go to God. I say, God, she said this. And she said that that was in, the, in our beginnings. I said, Lord, she she would mean to me. And she said this. She said, oh, and boy, I'm just crying to God. Because I felt like what she said was so mean and so hurtful. And I didn't see myself like that. I didn't see myself the way that she was telling me. But I did. But see, God had mercy on my soul because he knew I was ignorant and didn't know nothing. <laughs> and, and he knew that I had not. I wasn't used to looking at the truth of myself. I wasn't used to seeing me through his eyes. I was used to seeing me through my own eyes. So I felt like I was right. And so he had mercy on me. and. And, and after she talked to me, it didn't take may, maybe one or two days. And I would see in myself what she said she saw. And, but even when I had a conversation with him, he, he'll he let me get it all out. Boy, he let me. <laughs> he let me get it all. He let me get it all out. And then, and then I say, Lord, what you say? What you say about all this? What, what do you say? Now, if he would have told me, Tasha. She wrong and you got to leave. Then I would have left. Uh, I'm sure I would have left her ministry had he told me that. But he he ain't never told me that. Every time. Dog, I wish he would have told you. Dog, I wish he would have told you. <laughs> he didn't tell me that. He didn't tell me. He didn't tell me that. Every time. Every time she told me something. Every time. And I would go to God crying. I go to God crying. Boy, I go to God just upset, mad, feel like she wrong. And I go to God. I said, God, she was mean to me. <laughs> And she talked to me about this and that. Can you believe she said that? It <laughs> got so sweet. He just let me get all out, all out my system. And then he say, he say, she right. <laughs> it, it wait. It, and then what I do? What? She right? What? Man. I said, man, she got away with that one. Man, she, man, she got away with it. She got away. I, mean, I feel like she got away with it. <laughs> I wasn't used to no leader that that actually had conversations with God and would tell me the truth about me. I didn't, I didn't, and I wasn't used to looking at myself in the truth. So I didn't know that what she was saying was true. I didn't know that, but but God know that I didn't have that that good sense yet. That you know, but He just patiently taught me that she was right. So I said, okay. So so that was the first time. It 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 it, 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 it guess what? It didn't stop there. She came again, and she said, Tasha. X, Y, Z, this was wrong with you. Da, 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 da. I said, oh. And the way she said it, I said, ooh, I said, ooh, I got her now. I said, boy, I'm going to tell God on her now. <laughs> I still ready to tell on her. <laughs> and again, what did God do? He listened to my whole sob story. Look, I went and I told God the whole story. I said, oh, Lord, she, she said this. And she said that. Lord, look what she said and how she said it. Da, da, da. And look at this and look at that. And, and again, God let me get it all out. <laughs> I said, surely this can't be right. I said, Lord, what you say? I gave him his opportunity to tell me his point of view. God said, she right. I said, really? I said, for real? I said, all right, well, I guess I got changed then. All right, then. All right. All right, then. All right. So it's okay. I think I did it third time, too. Look, I still, I I think I went to God. Or I, I, I think I went a third time, too. I think I did. Look, it was so many years ago anyway. So by that third time, boy, you know, tell my story. And, and and again, he just kindly listened to me, let me get it all out. And then he say, she right. I said, okay, all right then. All right. So by that fourth, I think it might have been that fourth time. She came and she told me about my sorry self and all my foolishness and all that, all that, whatever, you know. And uh, and when she told me. I say, I started to go to God. I started. <laughs> but I, I can remember me saying, wait, wait, wait. I, I know God. I know. She right. I know. Okay. I'm going to just get me together. And somewhere along the line, I just 
I just learned to just say, okay, what she say, I need to listen to it. Sometimes we need to talk to God and get an understanding of how we need to receive what our leaders say or how we need to handle what our leader tell us. Because a true leader won't always tell you what feel good. A true leader will not always tell you uh, what what you want to hear. They're going to tell you what does say of the Lord. And as we can see the in, in the first part, sometimes... So some people can be a people that already got their mind made up that they write. And so ain't, ain't nothing nobody can say to them. And so when the leader talk and they not listening, they get what they get. And as many times I got what I got, but thank God for his mercy and grace over my life. Thank, 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 thank God for his mercy. So I encourage us to be accountable, be accountable to God. Be accountable to the leadership that God give us. Be accountable, um, meaning be obedient to God. Do what God say do. And, you know, because we don't want to get a bad report through our leader and we don't want to get a bad report with God. We don't want God to, to you know, we, we don't want to get in trouble with God because we're not doing what he say do because we letting what, you know, people look at us and, and we're not going say what he say or we're not going to do what we're supposed to do because we're looking at people we don't want that so we just wanted this this is really a call to god's people saying hey let's let's get into that place of obedience let's do what god have us to do because at the end of the day not only can we get in trouble for our own selves not being obedient to god but we can also get in trouble for those who get lost or, or who die in their sin because we didn't do what god told us to do and that's a whole lot of in trouble that I, I I I don't want it. So I look, I can raise my hand and say, Lord, help me to get it together because I don't believe I got it all together. But I thank God that I believe God put me under a leader that can help me to get there if if I be obedient and listen and 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 hear what the Lord says to me through my leader and just directly Himself. Because God sometimes God talk to us directly, sometimes God talk to us through our leader. So either way, we just gotta hear God and do what He say do. We because we don't want to get in trouble with God because we could have done right and we didn't. And I say, amen. I hand it over to Apostle Parker. So, Apostle. 